Hey guys, welcome to my March 15th DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the past, I think, I think it's been about a month. Now I want to show this one first, because Wet Marie One sent this to me. He was only able to find one copy. There's hardly anything about this listed online. I went personally to like six Walmarts trying to find it. Now, in a month from now, even a week or two from now, this could be at every Walmart. I don't know if this was put out early, but it seems really impossible to find. And it's the horror collection. It's from Lionsgate, because I'm sure people are going to be trying to find this. Now, I think four of the titles have been released, and four have never been released on DVD in the U.S. at all. And it's 976 Evil 2, which is the rare one, um, Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College, The Unholy, which I've never seen that one, and Chud 2, Bud the Chud, which I like that one. And um, the other ones on the collection are Waxworth, which is out already, Chopping Mall, Slaughter High, and Class of 1999. Now, they're all in full screen, except for, I think it was Chud 2 and The Unholy, or in widescreen. And a lot of these, like the ghoulies and stuff, say um, artists in the beginning. So I'm thinking that they must have taken the transfer from these, from, from some of these, from the... UK releases and the for other country releases of some of these titles. It's just interesting that that's, I was really like, um, like this collection because some of these things have never been put out ever. Um, so I wanted to show that one first. Now this one I didn't know was on Blu-ray and then I was looking up um, Johnny English and this just came, no it's been out for a long time I think in England. I don't know when it's going to come out in the US and it's Mr. Bean the Bean Movie. Now I will say though there's something very interesting about this. There is a difference to the turkey scene. Now in the American version, Mr. Bean puts the turkey on his head and, you know, when he's stuffing it, kind of like in the skit, I think it was the Chris, the Thanksgiving episode of Mr. Bean. Um, but on this version, the British version, he um, goes through the fridge and he's like, what are we going to serve? And he starts taking out an onion and all this stuff. And they basically just stuff it in the microwave and they don't have any of that scene. And, you know, I kind of like the way this version flows. But if they put out the, um, you know, American Blu-ray of it, I'll have to get it, you know. The um, stuff that's cut, though, is in the cut scenes. And I, the cut scenes, I think most of the stuff that was on the VHS, that was the only place where the deleted scenes ever were, I think there might be a couple of them missing. Like when Mr. Me was messing around with the ride, I think they had more of him unscrewing stuff. I think so. I can't remember, though. The next one I got... And I saw this in theaters, so I haven't opened it yet. And I thought this was kind of funny. You know, it's not amazing, you know. You want to play Twister with your sister? You know, Adam Sandler in Jack and Jill. And he's basically this kind of Hollywood guy, lives in a real nice house with his family. And his sister is coming for Thanksgiving. And he can't stand his sister. She's a pain. And he basically has to deal with her. <coughs> and, sorry, basically she comes. He doesn't want to have to deal with her. And then she basically won't leave, and she keeps staying around. At the same time, Adam Sandler's character is trying to pull this deal off with, um... Who else was... Who was the one guy in this? You know, Al Pacino. And Al Pacino ends up liking his sister. So it's all this kind of stuff. It was... I thought it was kind of funny. It's nothing amazing. This one is Elizabeth Olsen's, I think, first movie. She's up now in the movie Silent House, called Martha, Marcy May, and Marlene. And, there, I mean, this is a really well-done movie. There's not a whole ton to it. Like, you're not going to watch this, and there's not a whole lot to it. The movie's kind of just like things happening. And it's basically she was kind of in this kind of cult group. Like, I don't know what you would call it. Like, this, with all these people, and they were kind of, like, living together. A commune, I guess you'd say. And she basically, it starts with her running, you know. You see her in the commune, and she ends up running through the woods and basically escapes. And she ends up going back and finding, calling her sister. And she basically keeps on having these visions and, or like memories of what happened to her, why she was there. And it kind of blends with reality. And they kind of make it where you don't even know where, she doesn't even really know where she is at points of time. She keeps on getting confused with everything. It's interesting. I didn't absolutely love it, but I thought Susan also, I mean, Elizabeth Olsen did a really good job. I think she definitely is going to have a pretty good career. This one is a little bit embarrassing, I'm going to admit. You know, I, I'm glad that I have it because of how pretty bad it is, but it's bad. And it's called Beneath the Darkness with um, Dennis Quaid. I think it's on Netflix. So I probably, unless you really want to own it, you know, just because of how bad it is, but I would probably watch it on Netflix. 
but it's basically, it starts, and I'm not ruining anything, with Dennis Quaid, like, running, he's, like, jogging, and then he ends up, like, seeing this guy, and he's like, oh, he's like, hi, how's it going? He's like, here, close. And I think he, like, hits him over the head or something, and then starts burying him, and Dennis Quaid buries the guy out there. You know, he makes the guy dig his own grave and then buries him, and Dennis Quaid plays it so over the top, and he's like, hee, 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 ooh, and he's, like, doing these faces, and he's over, I mean, I think it's the worst acting I've ever seen him do. In fact, probably some of the movies with the shittiest acting weren't as bad as the way he was acting in, in some of these scenes. Of course, there were some scenes he was doing good, but some of these over-the-top things, which I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know who told him to do that. And it was just so ridiculous. And the basic idea, though, is these kids... Basically, for some reason, they have this idea that the place where Dennis Quaid lives, his character lives, is a haunted house. And they see at night the shadow of this woman and this man dancing. And for some reason, they think it's a ghost. So they basically end up sneaking into the house, and the one friend ends up getting killed. And it's all these weird things. And the, the basic thing that stands out, though, is how Dennis Quaid was acting. You know, I, if it was Randy Quaid doing it, I could understand the acting, and it would, it would fit. But Dennis Quaid doing it, I'm just like, I don't know. Now, of course, this is a must-see if you haven't seen it. This is the 3D version, and it's Hugo 3D. It's a Martin Scorsese film, and it's about this kid who lives in the train station in France, and he's basically switching all the clocks and stuff. And um, Sacha Baron Cohen, you know, Borat, Ali G character is in it. And it's, it's hard to explain, though. It's, it's really good, though. Now, this one... These triple feature horror collection. I mainly got this for the Blu-ray of Forget Me Not, and um, I thought that was pretty good. The Forget Me Not. So the actress who was in the movie Prey, and I think Gracie. That but Prey was the one she was in that I liked with the um, tiger, and they went out to Africa. And, but this one is basically about these group of these friends, and it kind of, what the, the game they're playing was kind of like the game in the episode of Afraid of the Dark, if anyone remembers that one, about the kids in the graveyard. And I can't remember exactly what they were doing in it. But that's basically what it was, was these kids that were playing this game. And in the in this movie, when the the main character is the only one that remembers these people, and like people get these people characters get killed off and then all the friends forget about the person, even though if they were dating the person, but she remembers them and they're all going, Whatever happened to Gina? And they're like, Who? Are you crazy? It's basically like that. That's pretty much the movie. And she has to try and figure out what's going on. Red Hook was a slasher movie about these um, kids that were getting these texts on a scavenger hunt. You know, the best scavenger hunt movie was Midnight Madness, if you haven't seen that. Um, it was alright. Um, now, these are some of the ones. This was, I think, $7 Memento. Um, this is hard, very hard to explain. Now, all of these came out, and I have to get these on Blu-ray. The American Pie films. I'm, de I'm really looking forward to seeing the new American Pie movie. Um, it was weird though, like in the theater, you know, it wasn't getting a big reaction. Like I wonder if people, you know, the age group that it's trying to appeal to is not as interested in it. Or they just don't remember it as much. Because I love the American Pie movies. I really can't wait to see it. But I hope it does well. I really do. Now of course I had to get The Night Professor on Blu-ray. I had this on the flopped HD format years ago. Hopefully at some point they put the clumps on Blu-ray, because I like that one just as much. And basically it's Sherman Klump, um, Klump and George, and he basically is like a scientist at a um, college, and he basically um, creates this uh, formula which can make people lose weight, like fast. And he ends up, <clears throat> well, helps them lose weight, and he ends up um, spilling something. I forget exactly how it happens. I think he spills his genes with something and he ends up creating... No, that was the sequel. That was the sequel. Sorry, I'm thinking of the sequel. In this one, he drinks the thing and he ends up becoming Buddy Love, the skinny character. And, um, I don't know. I always loved that movie, this movie. Now, this was really cheap, so I had to get it, um, at Best Buy, Groundhog Day, which, you know, Eddie, which is, um, Bill Murray's character and it's Every single day, it's the same day. This was a good movie, although, although this is the movie that killed the friendship, apparently, between Bill Murray and Howard Ramis. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's what causes them to not want to do the back to the, I mean, the Ghostbusters together. Um, let me see now. 
I got these two. These were cheap at Walmart. Faster with Ridgemont High and Parenthood. Um, now this one, everybody hates this movie. I always liked it. Reindeer Games. I can't explain it. I haven't seen it in probably since, like, what? Probably since 2001, but I liked it. The new Johnny English. Like I said, I've seen these in theaters, so I haven't opened them yet. Johnny English. Um, this is basically the sequel to the Johnny English films. People didn't like this that much. It got sort of mixed reviews. But I, I, I love Ron Atkinson. I like pretty much anything he does. Uh, of course, Tower Heist. This one was really good. Um, this is, I think, the best Eddie Murphy movie in a really long time. You know, the new one, The Thousand Words, or whatever that one was called, I thought that was okay. Um, this one, though, is basically about a, um, like, Ben Stiller's character works at this big tower. I think it's in New York. I think it's New York. And basically, the person who owns the tower, or the main tenant, or something like that, ends up embezzling money, and they basically find out that he, you know, all the employees of the tower invested money with this guy, and he ended up you know, screwing up all their money. So they're all losing everything because of this guy. And they basically make a plan to get their money back. And they have, you know, Eddie Murphy's character, you know, help them. And I, I love, I, I like this movie a lot. Now this I got at one of the closing down blockbusters with, you know, Bobcat Goldwaith, who I, I love his stuff. I can't wait to see the new movie that he directed, um, the new horror one called Shakes the Clown. And this was like $3 at one of the closing down ones. Now this is another one of the collections that the horror one was in. This is the comedy collection with You Can't Hurry Love, My Chauffeur, From the Hip, Shanghai Express, Touch and Go, Day with an Angel, All of Me, and Weekend Pass. I don't think I've seen any of these, I think, except Date with the Angel, which I think it was out of print. Now this one, the last one I got, is a, a lot of people aren't going to, like, we're making jokes about this one, the Method Man film, um, The Mortician. Now. They kind of make it look like from the cover that this takes place in like 1850 or something. And it does. It takes place now. And it's really not a horror movie as much as it's basically Method Man works in a really rough neighborhood in a um, more t like a funeral home. And he's an embalmer and like, you know, and basically the thugs and stuff are basically saying, oh, we're adding more to your collection and stuff. And he's just a regular guy working at this place. And he starts noticing, like, weird things going on. There's this one kid who's always wandering around. I saw, too, this movie. Sorry, I watched on the behind the scenes of this, that they were having all kinds of money problems because the one investor ended up pulling out. So I got had all kinds of issues with making this. But Eddie Edward Furlong, his character, is in this. And I'm going to say that he, his character is one of the most... Like, you're thinking, what the fuck's going on with this character? Because he's, like, there... And then he's not there, and I don't know what happened. I don't know if they just had him come in for one day and do, like, the weirdest, strange cameo. Because you don't really know who... It, it's kind of like... They make it, like, supposed to be, like, Method Man is, like, the only guy there unlocking the doors and locking the place up. And then you see Andy Furlong's character there, and you're like, what's he doing? And then he's, like, there a little bit, and then he's not there again. He's there for one scene, then he's back again. And how did he get back? It's, it's really peculiar. If you watch it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like, what's he doing? And I almost feel like, too, the one sequence, they must have not shot it right on him. And Eddie Furlong's entire scene, which should be a close-up on him, is on Method Man. And it's, you don't even, I don't know what was going on. On a technical standpoint, there was some weird stuff with the Eddie Furlong footage. <laughs> but anyway, though, it was a kind of a creepy, like, concept, the whole movie, what was going on. I liked this. I really thought it was pretty good, but... Weird movie. Really difficult to explain, too. But anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching, for subscribing. And um, like I said, too, thanks so much for Wet Movie for sending me that DVD. Also, underneath this video, check out the link for the message board that me and Wet Movie have started. So definitely join that if you get a chance to. Anyway, though, I'll see you guys later.